Hello friends. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to go from After Effects to Cinema 4D to put all your crazy wonky animations into live footage. So I just have this shot in my studio, um, just kind of running through with the gimbal really quickly. So I'm just going to right click, replace with After Effects composition. That is going to open up After Effects. And then we're just going to go to the tracker and track the camera. Um, and this might take a little bit of time. Cool, now that your camera is solved, click on your 3D camera tracker up here. Try to find some points that would be on the floor. <clears throat> that was weird. Um, so, like these are some good points. That's a good point. Uh, and that's a good point. So, I'm gonna create a solid and camera from those points. And then I'm gonna scale this solid up so that it's roughly the perspective of the floor. Um, I'm not gonna move it too much because I don't want it to like break the track. I can move it on specific axes and rotate it a bit, but you don't wanna move it on the vertical axis for sure. So that looks good to me, it's staying on the floor. Radical, um, and then you're gonna go back into here, and this is kind of specific to my shot, but uh, I need to create another solid that'll represent the backdrop, because I'm gonna have shadows on the backdrop. So, create solid, and then scale it up roughly to where, no, the backdrop would be, ka -chow. And ka-chow, and bring it down a little bit. And there you go. So now I have that going for me. And then just save this project, and then file, export, Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. 2D layers that are found are the footage. That is totally fine. Just click through this. Uh, easy. Okay. And then go ahead and go into Cinema 4D. Exit out all of your windows. And then file, open project, and open the project that you just saved. It should be a Cinema 4D project. Um, so now this has all your camera movements and stuff and you can merge objects and find where you slapped all of your 3D scans. I got these most likely from 3dscans.com. They have some pretty cool open source scans that I got most of these things from. So I want Yungling Vom Maglestishkin. I'm gonna import it. The scale's probably going to be off a bit, but that's totally fine. So I'm gonna grab this place tool that is super handy and place him on the backdrop or the, on the floor where I wanted him and then hold T to transform him up and just make him a little bigger. He's gotta kinda, it, with respect to the backdrop and then he'll stay right in place because your camera's moving and no objects are moving which is pretty pretty radical and then if you want need to move him you should probably use the the place tool it's just super new it's on one of the newer updates of cinema 4d but that's pretty radical and then in octane uh you can go ahead and start this render we're gonna mess with these textures a bit but the first thing we're gonna do is at an HDRI environment. And I got all my HDRI environments from HDRI Haven. Um, so I'm gonna use Photo Studio Broadway Hall 4K.exr. 
I'm not gonna change the project path. And then I'm gonna just kind of roughly match the lighting. So go to the octane sky, environment tag, and then roughly match the direction of where the lighting is coming from. So for me, I have a big window coming this way. And you can see the shadows are already kind of starting to happen. So that looks all good and dandy. Um, I'm gonna go back to this. See how big that curve is. Okay. So I think it might be worthwhile for me to make a seamless looking backdrop to match up with these guys. So I'm gonna create a rectangle. Um, I'm gonna make it 4,000 by 4,000. I am going to get out of the 3D camera tracker and go to the default camera. So I can kind of move around here. Um, I'm gonna grab the point tool. Hit C on the keyboard to make this editable and delete one of these points. And then unclose the spline. Hit chamfer, shift C on the keyboard and then type in chamfer. And move this guy up. Make it a radius, roughly the angle of my backdrop and then create another rectangle and then do a sweep shift c on the keyboard to make a sweep command i'm kind of going through this relatively quickly because not everybody needs a seamless for their shadow catchers if you do and you don't understand this i'm really sorry and just roast me in the comments please so I'm gonna go back to this perspective and just match it up with where these little doohickeys are. So bring it all the way over there and all the way down here and scale it up a bit. Do, do, do. Um, match this rotation a little better. Match a tiny bit better. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. And then good job. That looks good. And then under here, I can just kind of turn these guys off. Um, and I can grab this rectangle spline. Maybe, no, I just want to edit those points. Oop, no, it was almost there. Just want to bring this out a bit, bring this up a bit. Okay, cool. So then the shadow, that's what I was going for. The shadow curves and it's not as abrupt. Um, I should have been explaining why I was doing that, but you live and you learn. But. So I'm gonna create a new octane material and I'm going to go to common and make it a shadow catcher and put this shadow catcher on my sweep. So all you see is the shadow and then I'm gonna create a new octane material and do whatever, not a layered material, silly boy. Um, do whatever you want with this octane material. I'm just going to make it a glossy material and make it black and make the roughness a an image because that is, I'm a one trick pony. That is the quickest way to make something sort of visually dynamic in octane, in my opinion. Um, and then apply it to the little Dito here. And there you go. So, to render this out with the shadows and all, you're going to want to go to, actually kind of want them to be a little bit more glossier. So I'm going to go into the node editor, add a color correction node in between the bitmap and the roughness and change the gamma until it gets glossier. Not too glossy, but a little bit glossier. Okay, cool. Looks good to me. Um, and then go into
going to your render settings. So I'll change this to GI Diffuse. Camera in Imager, turn denoiser off, at least for my computer, it helps quite a bit. And then down here, you don't want to keep the environment and you want to create an alpha channel. And that'll allow your shadows to be catchable. And then render, edit render settings, you want to save this somewhere, so. Uh, and then you want to click alpha channel and you want to change your render to octane render. And then you're good to go. You can render this out and you can replace this with any image. So uh, if you have like a more dynamic simulation or uh, something that you made in Houdini or Clo 3D, um, and I could show you how to do stuff in Clo 3D too, if that's what anybody wants to learn. I know I have one tutorial on it, but it's kind of a specific style in Clo 3D. So just let me know if you want like t-shirts or just random shit like that. Um, Cause I like making these videos. So yeah, just add it to the render queue, render it out. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Sweet, so it looks like uh, this render finished up. So I'm gonna hop back into After Effects here. Control I to import. Actually, before I do that, so make sure you, if you go to Edit, Preferences, Import, then your sequence footage is at 24 frames per second or whatever frames, frame rate you work in mostly. For most people, it's 24 that sweet, sweet cinematic look. Um, and then find where your image sequence starts. Tooties. Toots. Uh, oh, okay, so it looks like I recorded two sequences because uh, my computer crashed. So I have this first one. That'll just go on top of everything here. I can disable these. And then I have my second sequence. Tootsie's I1, it looks like. Yeah, for the last like five frames. Super lame that my computer crashed. I think. If your computer payments went on your car payment, you would think. So, and then you have that. Um, and it looks pretty good. The track's really pretty solid. The Optics are pretty solid. It's morphing with uh, everything else in the scene pretty well. The shadows look pretty good. You know, you know, it's like not real. I guess it's the vibe that I'm going for. Then I'm gonna Command Shift C to make a new comp with these, so I can just apply the same effects to all of them. And then I'm just gonna add a little curves adjustment to kind of match the uh, match the rest of the seen a little better. Lowering the highlights down a bit. Bring the shadows up a bit. Oh man. Got some very upsetting updates. we were gone but bingo that looks pretty good stuck on there pretty well and there you have it so thank you so much for watching um, really appreciate the all the new support from the last three videos that was super exciting I didn't really expect anybody to find them but I'm happy you're here and I'll just keep on putting out videos. Um, and if you will have anything that you in particular wanna learn that you think I might already know, uh, just leave a comment and I'll try to tackle it. Odds are someone else on YouTube has probably tackled it too, but you know, if they'll in the off chance that they haven't, just let me know. Um, yeah, pretty proud of how well that shadow is uh, curving. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Adios.